everyone. I'm Katie Teitler, Senior Analyst with Tag Cyber, and today I'm here with Timo Veskivo, Head of R&D. Did I say that right, Timo? Yes, that was that was good. All right. Good, good. Some of the hardest things in, in security are our, our global community, but we're really happy to have you today. Uh, we've been working together here, Tag Cyber and Arctic Security, for several months at this point, and we want to talk a little bit about Arctic Security and what you do, because one of the biggest challenges companies face when dealing with their digital ecosystem is understanding when there are indicators of compromise or when a cybersecurity incident has occurred. So according to a recent Tag Cyber survey, 49% of companies say that they were notified by external parties, law enforcement or partners, for instance, that they were victims of a cyber compromise. And while it's obviously positive to discover a breach when it happens, it's always better to discover it sooner rather than later. And if you're a victim of a compromise, waiting for somebody else to find that compromise generally means the incident has been laying in wait, and that's problematic. And so, Timo, that's what Arctic security is all about, right? That is absolutely right. So, so basically, Arctic security is set out to uh, clean up the internet from uh, compromised and uh, vulnerable systems, uh, which have been basically acknowledged by uh, uh, one or several third parties. And uh, uh, the problem is, is that uh, although these uh, third parties know about these uh, problems, uh, the actual network owners or, or the owners of the compromised or vulnerable systems do not know about uh, these issues uh, that they have in their networks and, and computers. And so while we see like new cyber threats emerging every day, uh, uh, it's quite alarming to see that uh, the old ones have not uh, gone away. So basically there are thousands and thousands of organizations that are still vulnerable and uh, affected by uh, cyber issues. Uh, which should be easy to mitigate and uh, and to fix. And uh, while, while we kind of like acknowledge that this is a major major task, uh, luckily we do have a quite effective approach. So uh, we do this by collecting information from uh, these third party data producers who have technology. Uh, to collect information about these issues and uh, by matching uh, the information to uh, organizations based on their network assets such as IP address ranges, uh, domain names or, or AS numbers. And as the result, uh, we can create notifications for organizations about the actual uh, compromised or vulnerable systems uh, they have. Basically letting them know about these issues so that they can fix them. And uh, in order to implement this approach in practice, uh, uh, we need to collaborate with, with other entities. So uh, first of all, we have a long track record of, of working with national cybersecurity centers and computer emergency response teams. And uh, in addition to uh, these national entities, uh, we work with uh, uh, security service providers, uh, enabling them to run a victim notification ser uh, process uh, to their customer base. Basically the same thing as we do with the national cybersecurity centers or, or certs. And we have recently launched also a new model where we run a victim notification process ourselves uh, in order to enable like an easy entry for our partners and collaborators to uh, getting started with uh, offering victim notifications to their customers. So this partnership network, if you will, is pretty important. What do you do technologically? How does 
how does Arctic security as a platform actually work? What do companies have to do? How is it deployed? Uh, and what are the mechanisms by which you gather all of this information? Well, uh, we have, uh, we have, as I said, like we have a licensed product that we, we uh, deploy to our customers. So typically these customers are such that they, uh, they don't, uh, they don't want, they don't want to have other uh, organizations to process their own information. So, so that is the reason why uh, this is usually the, the, the only feasible solution to have, have the information processed by their their own deployment, uh, but of course there there can be also some other models, uh, and uh, our we have uh, targeted for our products to be easy to use, easy to uh, to uh, to deploy, so that the end users would not have to spend very much time on these kinds of like technical issues, uh, setting up this basically this automation process of of collecting data, uh, matching data against their stakeholders, and then notifying their stakeholders about uh, compromised systems or, or vulnerable systems that have been found based on the information that they collect. And it is significant to to uh, to state that uh, that in this process, each party has a little bit different. Uh, source of sources of information available, so we we uh, need to be uh, very flexible in that sense to to allow a lot of different uh, data from from a number of different data sources to be integrated into our systems. And uh, as important as the the technical integration to different data sources is also uh, the uh, uh, harmonization of data. So we play, basically have done a lot of work to, uh, to bring all this information into a harmonic format so that uh, we could actually play automation rules uh, to this data so that uh, it is possible to facilitate an automated process based on the, on the information. What types of data are you gathering from companies? Is it internal? Is it external? Um, you mentioned a bunch of different device types. Is it, you know, endpoints, laptops? Is it servers or services that are exposed to the internet? What kind of data and, and information are you capturing? So basically, like if, if we look at the, the kind of data that we capture, so we basically collect the data from third parties that produce information about, about now, generally speaking, this this kind of information is is uh, is referred to as, as cyber threat intelligence or cyber threat information. Uh, but the the data is about uh, largely it is about uh, compromised systems. So there can be different types of of, of uh, technical methods how to collect information about compromised systems. But we never uh, gather the, the data directly from uh, from uh, these organizations or by by doing anything directly to these to these uh, monitored organizations we just take data from third parties and then match the data against what we know about their internet assets to find out basically like the the needle in the haystack to to go through a lot of information to find information that is relevant for this particular uh, organization and uh, now, if we look at the pra practical uh, kinds of data, for example, like practical example is, is uh, uh, scanners, information about computers that have uh, been seen to scan other computers in the internet. That is like simple uh, technical. There is a like it's it's easy to set up a technical method to 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 see which computers in the internet are scanning other computers. And it would be relevant for the owners of those computers which are doing the scanning to know that in your network there is a computer that is doing the scanning. You should be aware because it can affect how other organizations see your organization's networks because uh, the, they are not, not usually doing the scanning deliberately, but, uh, but there is some uh, either compromised or... or, or 
some other reason behind behind this activity. And another category of information is is basically malware infected hosts. They can of course do do scanning as well, but uh, the other detection mechanism for this kind of uh, data is is to use malware sinkholes. And the malware sinkholes are very effective in detecting like well-established uh, known uh, malware. Uh, and and uh, for those, uh, the sinkholes can produce quite a lot of uh, information. So basically, uh, the method works in, in such way that uh, when there is a sinkhole, so basically security researchers or, or the good guys have, have captured some malware domain, for example, that is used by the malware. And then as a consequence, the malware's, uh, malware infected hosts start to communicate to this uh, computer that is owned by the good guys. And as a result, we see these communication attempts to the, to the malware sinkhole. And we can actually tell uh, which uh, computer is, is compromised. And, and that is that is it produces the data and of course the the the, consequ the, the end result is the same so uh, the owner of the compromised system should know that in your network there's a there is a system that has contacted malware sinkhole and it's good to know that it's most likely compromised and so this uh, the is list really, of, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is really a complement to companies' other vulnerability management, vulnerability scanning, or maybe ingestion of the CVE or CVSS. Is that right? Uh, let's put it this way: that yes, it is. It is complementary. So, so these inf these information do not overlap. So we tell about like actual compromised systems and actual when we talk about the vulnerable systems. That's yet another category of information, and and basically we produce that kind of data uh, based on on information from parties who do large scale scanning in the internet. So there are entities who do these kinds of uh, large scale scans, and some of them produce the data so that they they give it to a, a, like national uh, cybersecurity centers or or CERT. So that they could they could uh, take the the, uh, the following actions based on that, and uh, some sources are are available for for everybody to use. Uh, uh, so so there are different uh, different categories of data producers, but uh, uh, as the result, we can leverage these large scale scans uh, that run through the internet to figure out also compromised hosts. Uh, I mean, uh, vulnerable systems and uh, report the owners of those those uh, uh, systems. So I would imagine that some of the companies you're competing for dollars against are the kinds of companies who would focus on risk scoring or vulnerability prioritization. Arctic Security doesn't do that. Why not? Why have you taken a different approach? Uh, yeah, it is. It is actually like a good question, and and uh, we have quite clear stand on this. We feel that uh, that uh, the the kind of data that we convey, basically each item of information is is like really actionable. It means that you need to do something about this compromised host or this vulnerable system, and in in most of the cases this information is is valid and correct and and uh, the end user, the recipient of the data should act based on it so uh, so uh, we want to provide the the recipient with information that is relevant for them so so in that context they would not very much do anything with a score but they want to get the relevant information for them to actually fix the issue and uh, and that's and and the subsequent technical uh, details needed to fix the issue. And then there is another fundamental challenge in in very detailed scoring. And this this uh, challenge is that uh, uh, we don't really know uh, the uh, the exact details of the recipient network. So so basically, if we observe a vulnerable system in in two two different organizations, A and B, 
there can be additional details in these observations that make uh, this uh, vulnerable system much more critical for, for organization A. And we don't know these details, so it is quite difficult to, to come up with the, uh, with, the, with the fair scoring. And that's why we, our approach basically is, is uh, not to have, have like this kind of generic scoring, but in order to help, help comprehending the information, we have still, uh, uh, there are, there are some, some plans and approaches that we could use, like to have some high level categorization of, of the observations. And, but the, the aim would be different. So it would be to help the co to comprehend the data and not to compare uh, different entities. I, I believe the, the comparison, direct comparison between, like uh, with this kind of limited information may be, may be in some situations uh, a bit unfair. So Arctic Security, your platform is almost like an emergency alert system for companies who have either or may have an active compromise on their hands. Is that accurate? Yes, it is. In in a sense, yes. Uh, so so uh, one could say that they, the the information that is typically conveyed through our systems is is like uh, uh, they are are very relevant indicators of of uh, of something possibly being being wrong. So that the recipient should definitely act and and check those items. We cannot always state that, that every indicator means actually that there is, there is something wrong, but uh, and, and some of the items that are there may be there deliberately by, by the end user. Eventually there may be even like honeypots and things like that, that the end user uh, recipient is running. But these are items that still should be, the recipient should definitely be aware of because uh, there are all already others who know about them. So why shouldn't the the uh, the actual organization uh, who owns the networks also know about them? So in a sense, even though you don't do traditional risk scoring or vulnerability prioritization, almost by definition, everything you surface is a priority because it's active. Yes, that's that's basically why we haven't gone into 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 further categorization. So, so we believe that each item basically is worth uh, worth looking at. And at the point at the point if if that is not the case, then we need to look at the kind of data we push through our systems instead of uh, instead of uh, uh, the uh, going towards uh, prioritization of the of the of the observations or or uh, letting uh, the end user to to uh, to feel that uh, that the data is not worthwhile to to act on. All right, that that makes a lot of sense. Um, quickly tell everybody who's watching how is this deployed? How how easy or hard is this for a company to implement within their security stack? So in order to answer this one, uh, we need to take into account two viewpoints. So. Uh, first of all, if we look at the company, at the recipient uh, side of uh, victim notifications, uh, which should be the case uh, uh, in the vast majority of organizations who face our uh, technology in practice. Uh, for, for those uh, entities, it should be very easy uh, to deploy this. So, so basically, they just need to sign up for, for a service uh, which is already offered by uh, many of our collaborators, or uh, which may be available for them through their national cybersecurity. And uh, for signing up, they just need to know their net network assets to monitor. Uh, this basically means IP ranges, domain names, uh, autonomous system numbers, if any, owned by the organization. And then uh, the second viewpoint is the viewpoint of, of a service provider or a partner or a national cybersecurity entity. Uh, these are the, the ones who license our software to run this victim notification process by themselves. And uh, for those, we have 
uh, also made uh, deploying our technology as easy as possible. So if we look at the simple benchmark in a typical uh, case, setting up a new cloud deployment takes uh, less than an hour. Uh, so, so it is relatively easy. And uh, uh, when we when we deal with these kinds of uh, customers, we integrate with their data sources uh, that are available for the customer. And in an increasing number of uh, of situations, we can use the out of the box integrations uh, to do so uh, to have an easy start with the data consuming part. And for the victim notification part, uh, the dissemination of the data, in the end, uh, they will need to go through the manual part of uh, configuring the system with information about their stakeholders, their networks, uh, their contact information for, for the victim notifications. And, and, and so, uh, so, so even though it is uh, definitely worth the effort uh, for those ones who license our, our technology to run this process, uh, it's unfortunately not possible uh, to automate the part of, uh, of configuring the, the stakeholders. Of course not. We all like an easy security button or a security easy button, maybe. But it still sounds like all things considered, it's relatively easy. There are a lot of integrations and it's something that all companies should have. So if somebody wants to find out more about Arctic security, Timu, where do they go? How do they find you guys? Yeah, so our uh, website is uh, arcticsecurity.com. Uh, all the relevant information can be found found there, and uh, uh, of course, we are we are always happy to happy to help uh, anyone who is interested to learn more. So, uh, and on our, on our website, we also have a have a um, uh, security posture uh, request. So. Basically, organizations who are interested in this kind of uh, data can request for a security posture report that we will produce by using our technology. And this will tell the recipient something about their about the kinds of uh, observations we, we, we have for their networks. And we, in order to do that, we will contact the, the, uh, uh, the one who has requested the, the report. And uh, we need to gather some information based on which the report will be created. And hopefully when they do that, they don't have one of those uh-oh moments, huh? but that they work with you to prevent those. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Good, good. Well, thank you so much, Timu. You've been very kind to spend all this time with me today. For everybody watching and listening, thank you for your time. Check out our friends at Arctic Security for sure. And we'll see you again next time. Thank you very much. It's been my pleasure.